We just flip pizza. Three, one, two, three. Tonight, live at the Inspire Theater on the corner of Las Vegas Boulevard and Fremont Street in the heart of fabulous downtown Las Vegas, we present the Downtown Podcast. Starring your hosts, Dylan Jorgensen, Sonia Tello, Jason Outlaw, and music by yours truly, DJ Lenny Love Alfonso. Tonight's guest, CEO and CTO of Wing Bunny, Rodrigo Alonso. From CBS Radio, Chris Jackson. Musical performance by Violin Girl Amanda. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up for the man who's the Pope's Uber driver, Mr. Jason Outlaw! That was my white boy dance. Get up for DJ yeah, Lenny yeah, Alfonso, yeah. huh? <laughs> How's it going, Lenny? Life is beautiful. Life is beautiful, as opposed to today is a good day. <laughs> All right, you well, totally you know, messed up. That yeah, time of the good. year. That, that's good, though. Life is beautiful. Yeah, who's going to Life is Beautiful? Anyone make some noise? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Life is, wow, that guy's game, yeah, all right. He's like, oh, no, oh, no, oh. life is, who, who, you, who do you want to see, sir? Who's your favorite guy that you're, that you're coming to see? Stevie Wonder? Stevie Wonder? Oh, yeah, that's what I'm all about. Stevie Wonder, yes. <laughs> yes. I love, I love Life is Beautiful. It's such a great time. They do some cool paintings and all that good stuff, make the city look nice for a change instead of crackheads. So we're good. It's good. Hey, it's good. hey. Yes, yes, yes. Hey, about downtown hey, like hey, that. hey, it's okay. I'm gonna, hey, I'm going to be hanging out with the crackheads. I'm going to be like, yeah, crack. Let's go. Let's go. Crack is whack, man. Crack is whack. All right, so this is what is happening in the news. That's right. Uh, so South Park, the show South Park is in the news. Um, they had Donald Trump on their episode getting brutally murdered. That's right. Yes, Donald Trump got brutally murdered. Yes, indeed. So uh, actually, the reason why he got brutally murdered is because he didn't respect Cartman's authority. <laughs> you will respect my authority. No. That's Donald Trump. I don't know. That's my Donald Trump person. It's cool. It's cool. <laughs> Fun stuff. Did you guys see Life is Beautiful. Did you guys hear about this, uh, the, the, uh, the, the drug CEO that raised the price of a 40-year-old drug? He raised it from $13.50 to $750. Yes, indeed. But you know, I, hey, you know, some don't hate on him, though, because he says he's got a good reason. He's trying to cure his short man's small penis complex. <laughs> That's what he said. So, this guy is such a, if you, I've watched an interview with him, I was like, this guy's so easy to make fun of. It's unbelievable, it's unbelievable. But you know, the funny thing about drugs, here's the funny thing about drugs, and I'm gonna just throw this out there. You know, sometimes, like you see these drugs on TV, and there's all these crazy things like with the big side effects. Like they go into this long thing. It's like, may cause watery eyes, uh, itching uh, skin, uh, could cause breakouts, bleeding out of your anus. You're like, what was that last one? <laughs> Did you say bleeding out of my, uh, no, I'm good with my cold. I'm gonna stick with that. <laughs> That's what it is. It's true, man. That's, that's the way it is. It's, it's kind of like, there's a drug called Risperdal. Anyone heard of Risperdal? Risperdal is a drug. It's for anger disorders. Like, if you get upset a lot, you know, it's supposed to, like, you know, change you uh, and, and t take you away from the anger, you know. But he here's the deal. The big side effect is you may develop breasts. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, so if you're a girl, like, so be it, right? You're like, all right, whatever. I'm going to Victoria's Secret, whatever. But if you're a guy, wouldn't that piss you off that much more? <laughs> no? <laughs> I mean, you're a guy, you wake up in the morning, you're like, man, I feel wonderful. Holy smokes, I feel great. You know something? Today, I'm, I'm, just, I'm so happy, I'm just going to get up and start work early. Let me take a shower. Oh my gosh, I've got breasts! <laughs> I guess I'm one in 100,000. <laughs> I'm going back to bed. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I would do. That's exactly what I would do. Right, guys? If we had boobs, we'd never leave the house. That's what it's all about, yep. Video games and boob play. That's, it. That's how it's rolling. <laughs> um, do you hear about this in the news? Um, the Vikings mascot, the Vikings mascot, who was making $1,500 a game, has recently been let go. Reason being is because he wanted to make $20,000 a game and have a 10-year contract. That's right. So they said, and the Vikings player, the Vikings owner said, that will happen when hell freezes over or when the Vikings win a Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
win the, the Vikings win a Super Bowl. Um, a high school kicker bounced an extra point off of a referee's head through the uprights. Mm. Did you hear about this? Pretty cool. So finally, high school referees are good for something. <laughs> Indeed. All right, ladies and gentlemen, give it up for DJ Lenny Alfonso! by Rachel's Kitchen. Be sure to visit Rachel's Kitchen at their new location inside the Lou Ruvo Center. Our next guest is an app guru. Please put your hands together for Rodrigo Alonzo. Thank you, Sonia. Hello. How are you? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thanks for having me here. Yes. So, um, we were talking earlier, and you are not from here. You are actually from South America. Exactly. I'm from Chile. Uh, the land of earthquakes and wine, so. <laughs> <laughs> so what did you do over there? Miners, I'm sorry, I heard that, mining. Uh, oh. <laughs> so um, while you were over there, what did you do over there? You were talking about you worked for Microsoft. Will you explain just a little bit about that? Sure, back in the 90s, I uh, studied engineering in my country and I fall in love with software because you can create whatever you want and, and it has so much potential. So I started creating companies. I created my first one when I was at the university and I sold it when I just graduated. Mm -hmm. So I make some money and this became really interesting. Mm -hmm. And then I said, okay, I need some international experience. So I joined Microsoft. I spent 14 years at Microsoft and then I became the CEO of the company. And then I decided to come back to my passion, which is uh, entrepreneurship. And I've created like eight companies already. I've sold two. I, I'm bankrupt two also. <laughs> well, cool. you wouldn't be an entrepreneur if that didn't happen, right? Right, exactly, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So after that, you came to the States. So what brought you to the States, and particularly Las Vegas? Right. I was uh, working with uh, small local businesses back in my country to help them to have a uh, uh, an important presence online so users mm -hmm. can find them. And then I decided to create this company, Wink Bunny, and mm -hmm. I was going to the Silicon Valley where every entrepreneur wants to go to launch their company in the United States, right? So yeah. I was going to San Francisco when I read this article uh, in Forbes about Tony Shai and what he was doing here. So I decided to come back here last year. Mm -hmm. And I found out everything great that is going on in the downtown, all the things that is going on on the bus, the bus around a small business, etc. But you did have one problem. You, exactly. You lived in Henderson. And that's correct. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> but now I'm living downtown. <laughs> but but because you were living in Henderson, right. Winged Bunny exactly. kind of helps you out and explain why exactly. that is. Exactly. When, when you live outside downtown or in the neighborhoods, you really don't have a place where you can see everything that is going on in downtown, for instance, mm -hmm. right? So I talked to many people in Henderson and they say exactly that. So I decided, okay, this is the place that I want to launch my business because Wing Bunny does exactly that helps you discover what is going on in the city, around the city, yeah. in real time, right? Mm -hmm. So I decided to stay here, and I came here three months ago, and uh, we are working hard here now. Awesome. Well, thank you. So now you can have organized content. So if you just look at Las Vegas or downtown Las Vegas, mm -hmm. you'll have all that content in one spot instead of everywhere. And then you're also um, doing something for the community with businesses. Explain a little bit more about that and the event that's going to happen in October. All right. One of the things that happened when we start uh, launching our beta, what we launched like a month ago, is that we saw that most businesses, more local businesses, were trying to solve their problems by themselves. Even the downtown project was trying to solve their problems by themselves. But I saw so much creative people with many startups around Las Vegas that could solve all those problems. The issue was that they were not getting together to solve the problem. So I got all this feedback from a lot of a startup and local businesses, and I, and I went to talk with Mark Rowland, who's managing Downtown Project, mm -hmm. and I explained to him, why don't we make this a special business event where we put together the, the business problems with the business solvers? So we are creating this community event that is going to happen on October. Awesome, awesome. So. <laughs> 
Do you like it? Yeah, they like they, they love it, love obviously. It. Yes. <laughs> so um, tell us where we can find Winged Bunny, and then also um, where they can find inf more information about this, the, the event that you were talking about. All right, about. wingbunny.com. And there you have all the information. At this time, we have only downtown Las Vegas information. So you can see city spot like downtown third, like Fremont East, Fremont Experience, or Container Park. And you can see what is going on there with all the uh, local businesses. For instance, have you ever looked for promotions for local businesses? The problem is you don't know where to find them. You don't go to their Twitter account to find their promos, or you don't search in Facebook because it's really ridiculous. OK, you will have all that in real time in Wing Bunny, right? So that's pretty cool. And uh, the other thing, the uh, information about this community event, we are going to put it in the vegastech.com uh, website, which is the website for the community of technology in Vegas. Perfect, perfect. Well, thank you so much for coming on our show. We really appreciate that. And don't go anywhere. Um, next up, we have one of the best on-air talents in Las Vegas, Chris Jackson. Nice. All right, well, that was an amazing segment, and we are going to cap it off by bringing out the uh, program director and on-air personality at everyone's favorite radio station, X1075. Come on out, Chris Jackson! Whoa. So that's so that's what you look like. I've that's always wondered. That's what I look like. I it's have like, a face for radio, I must say. You know, actually, it was the tattoos that I couldn't get in a TV for. You know. Yeah. Well, according to your profile, you you grew up in a trailer park, and you didn't think you had such. A I am a legitimate eight-mile story. Yeah. Yeah. No, not quite. But actually, no. I did grow up in a in a trailer park in Aurora, Colorado. And you can rap with people. No. No. Okay. So and that does, that's not always combined in the way I thought it was, huh? No. no. Okay. So t tell me, what does a program director do at a radio station? All right. So. Basically, a program director is someone who always has a bottle of whiskey in their desk drawer. Oh, I um, like it. Yeah, it's a they, good move. They scream, they yell a lot, they throw things, and they take complaints, and at the end of the day, they go home and watch Netflix. So your so, personality is on a hair trigger. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, essentially, a, a program director is the captain of the ship. Um, yeah. They oversee the day-to-day -day operations of a radio station, overseeing the on-air personalities, the music, um, the promotions, the contesting, the events, working with sales, working um, basically with the community to build what it is every day that we do, you know, more than yeah. just actually playing music, trying to connect with our community. Yeah, so. okay, so that's one of the things I want to talk about. Before we jump right into community, uh, what's going on with new media and like media in general? How well is radio going to survive in your opinion and what do you think it looks like? That's, you know what, that's a very good question. There's a lot of people out there actually right now asking that same question, you know, is radio going to survive? You know, it wasn't that long ago that something called Pandora popped onto everyone's phone and they said radio's gonna die. You're never gonna survive this. People can just yeah, pick a song and, and, and build a playlist. And then, of survive course, you XM know, radio. XM Sirius, another prime example. It's like, yeah. ooh, you got commercial free radio, all right, you know, and we survived that. And then, of course, came along this thing called Spotify. And, and by all means, Spotify is a great resource to discover new music. To You're go a listen warrior. To some of those things. You, yeah. you don't let anyone hold you. But down. you know what's going to make commercial radio thrive, no matter how great technology grows, is that local connection. Okay. You can listen to Sirius, and you can listen to XM, and these people out there have nothing, they have no concept of what's happening in your neighborhood, in your city. And that's where commercial radio will continue to succeed is having that you know connection with the local aspect ah, and good. the community. Think, yeah, that's good. And just I mean, by we, being able to we're say, very similar, yeah. you know, in yeah. Las Vegas this weekend, I have this, this, and this. You're not going to hear about that on Sirius. Yeah. I love Howard, but you know, no, no, dude. You're right, yeah. And in fact, in a lot of different verticals, you'll see it's democratizing into little spots of people that are catering to specific industries. So Absolutely. So, you, so is that the kind of future? Do you see like more radio stations popping up and more like significant? Uh, like in input into one vertical, I guess. I think I think absolutely, yeah. and you know, especially with streaming now. I mean, you know, a large chunk of our listenership now is online streaming, more so than even just you know the the, the radio tuner in your car. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. So, and what lessons can you abstract from that for some of the small business owners and small tech companies that we kind of cater to in our audience? What can they learn from that? 
Well, again, there's all different kinds of ways that you want to get your business out there. You got, you know, different platforms now for advertising. You got, you know, your print, you got your television, and you got your radio. All three very, very successful to help your business grow. With television and, of course, radio being the best platform you can use, obviously, for <laughs> advertising. Um, it's going to be, like, I love radio. again, finding a way to speak to that person that you're trying to reach and make yeah. that product relatable. Um, it's kind of tough to do that on a billboard sometimes. Now, I'm not saying yeah. you can't have that done, but that's why radio is going to continue to help small businesses grow because we can take your product, find a way to make him, her, her, and them come out and yeah. come to your business. You know, it's more than just saying, yeah, hey, here's who we are and here's what we got. Why does that mean something to you? So, and that's really what radio is supposed to be about. I mean, it's right. essentially music, but we're here to actually inform the public. Right, and especially if you make that their directive. I mean, you've got a lot of control over that, especially here in Vegas. And if you say, like, look, we're going to try to appeal to local groups. Be well, yeah, that's the power yeah. of being a program you know? director. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay, so are you, are, is your voice famous and you're not? Like, when you go to a bar or something, are they like, he's a guy? Well, you know what I mean? Like, but when you're like, can I get a... A whiskey? Are they like, oh my God? You're, you're you know what's radio. funny is that? Like, do they recognize it when you start talking? If anybody here from as much from my generation, back in the '90s, all the radio personalities always used to talk like this, and everything was just so no, 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 no not anymore. Um, you can just uh, hear. And so at that time, somebody could make a voice like that, and then go to the, you know go to the grocery store and be like, hi, I'm John. You know, <laughs> it's yeah, yeah, two yeah, completely yeah. voices. But um, we try to be very conversational in today's world. That's yeah. the way that we can I connect like that because I could just like that, I'm yeah. talking to you, I don't talk to you like this right yeah, now I would because be like, everything's Give me so exciting. So uh, because of that, yeah, sometimes actually people will recognize my voice. That's cool. Yeah, no, and it's then not. you get free, free like. It's not cool donut when you're at Walgreens picking up a prescription for something awkward. You know? <laughs> yeah. Like Viagra? Nah. No, 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 that's not me. All right. So a lot of people don't realize how difficult it is to be, you know, voice. A voice professional like us, right? Like we come out here on stage and we. It takes a we lot of do. talent. Right, oh. and it takes, you know, just like the gamers, it takes the majority of all of your day practicing. Yeah. So I thought we could maybe walk some people through how we like to practice. And I'm sure Chubby Bunny is the normal way at your radio station? Uh, it is now. I mean, I thought that bottle of whiskey in the program director's drawer was how we got through this. But I well, guess sure, now. Like, like an intern would have to go through a process of Chubby Bunny. Yeah, some actually, kind of, right? I think there's a lot of voiceover actors that are familiar with does this. Does everybody so. know Chubby Bunny? Everybody was in elementary school. Who did, Kate, has anybody been able to hold more than five marshmallows in their mouth? And do it? And <laughs> All right, well, anyway, so we thought what we'd do is kind of we'd give you like an inside scoop into what it's like to practice to be a radio announcer. So we're going to read you this book, one of my favorites. It's about a cactus who just wants a hug. <laughs> and on each page, we're going to add another marshmallow to our mouth. Now, in the process of reading this story with, you know, items in our mouth, am, am I doing the bedtime story voice, too? Once upon a time, a cactus wanted a hug. Right, you need to practice all the different oh, okay. parts of it. So if we could bring okay. out the uh, first stick of marshmallows, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. You just take one for the start. Taking one. Here we go. Right. Okay. So, oh, wow. This, this is hard. <laughs> so... Felipe was descended from an old and famous family who liked to look good and always behaved properly. Mm. His family kept everything neat, tidy, and they believed one should never trespass into another person's space. Oh, gosh. Oh, I just realized Is how this many a bad time to tell you I'm so allergic to marshmallows? Yes. <laughs> so Felipe was taught to keep still, encouraged to be looked at and told that one day he'd reach a high position. Marshmallows. <laughs> this is going to turn into a lot of trouble quicker than I thought. Oh. Too, too oh. much. OK. Don't speak too soon here. But Felipe <laughs> thought his family worried about all the wrong things. <laughs> they didn't notice that all he wanted was a hug. Oh. All he wanted was a hug. Okay. Oh. All right, here. Of course, he could see his family wasn't the touchy-feely type, so he wished someone else would come and put their arms around him. But no one ever did. Oh. Okay, this one's gonna this one's gonna change it a lot. Mm. I can tell this is like the only area for oxygen to come through. Hmm. Mm. Hmm. 
spit cup for his marshmallows. Mm -hmm. You can't eat that. You're going to have the sugar high for so long. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I got the five. Uh, can you do another one? Do you want another? No. Okay, I didn't know we were at the limit. Uh, all right. That was, the, that was attractive. That was fun. Yeah, but you can see it's hard work. But who wants to hear what happened to the cactus that wanted a hug? I'm willing to bet they lost the story about three pages ago. So. No, can okay, you see? So Felipe the cactus, he likes this balloon. And they grew closer and closer until one day disaster struck. Go ahead, you got this page. I know, his best friend's a balloon. Felipe was blamed and made to feel very bad. No one in his family thought of giving him a hug. I can taste all that. Oh, and you forgot the sound. Oh. Ugh! Oh, poor Felipe. Clearly, he didn't belong there. For a while, Felipe hoped he would find a new family. See, he tried the meerkats. Oh. They don't like But meerkats. wherever he went, he wasn't welcome. He couldn't join all those <laughs> What is games. that? That's a dog? Look at that <laughs> angry pig. <laughs> so he learned to enjoy his own company and thought he didn't need anyone else after all. Do you guys think that's good for Felipe to just enjoy not having friends? Yeah. <laughs> Look at him. He's trying to do Sudoku. <laughs> Why did he get the other way? Oh, did I miss a part here? Oh, no, yeah, you're good. Okay. No. During all this time, Felipe felt very lonely, but what he didn't know was someone else was feeling lonely too. Whoa. All right, any guesses who his new friend is? Chubby Bunny. <laughs> A chubby bunny? Anyone else? Who do you think Felipe the cactus? Porcupine? Oh, that's a good one. They could poke each other. <laughs> the, the day he realized that Oh, a rock. He found his best friend, the rock. Now, now you gotta do the ooh. <laughs> <laughs> and Felipe knew just what to do. He hugged him. Oh. And the end. Oh. Thanks, Chris. What kind of children's story <laughs> tells people to hug a cactus? <laughs> All right, give Seriously. it up for Chris Jackson. Thank you for coming out. Thank you. <laughs> Stay tuned after this commercial break. We are going to be right back with an amazing violin player. Stay tuned. <laughs> Our next performer, uh, you can get more information about her uh, on social media, Violin Girl Amanda. Ladies and gentlemen, Violin Girl Amanda.
Once again, violin girl Amanda. Thank you. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, that's our show. I'd like to thank all of our guests this evening. Thank you to our cast and crew, to our live audience, and all of you at home. Remember, you're all welcome to come here to the Inspire Theater on the corner of Las Vegas Boulevard and Fremont Street to be a part of our live studio audience. Party with us upstairs at the rooftop for the after party. And don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube for online only content. Like us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, MySpace, at Downtown Podcast, at DJ Lenny Love Alfonso. Peace, love, thank you, Salamat, Salamat. <laughs>